This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, so I'm going to apologise in advance. This chapter, Financial Instruments, it's going to make your head hurt. There's no guarantee about it. If it doesn't make your head hurt, fantastic. Trust me, when you get to strategic business reporting, it definitely will. Okay, it's one of the most challenging standards that is out there. There's lots of rules and applying those rules can be very, very challenging. Okay, so I apologise. However, stick with it. There are, as always, some easier aspects to it. So don't give up hope just yet. And at this level in financial reporting, it is all about crunching the numbers. There's no need to be able to explain anything. We will save the explanation when we get to strategic business reporting, shall we? Okay. Uh, so have I set the scene? Are you suitably worried? Suitably scared? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so let's go through and have a look at financial instruments and, and, and what financial instruments actually are. Okay. Uh, but before we get there, we need to know what accounting standards cover financial instruments. And I think that's why it gets a little bit complex because you've got three separate accounting standards. Uh, first one that you've got there is IS32, uh, which covers the presentation of your financial instruments. So looking there at whether essentially we record something as a financial liability within the financial statements or whether we record it as equity. Uh, there are other various little bits and pieces that add in in terms of the presentation. So if we're thinking about dividends on preference shares, whether those preference shares are redeemable or irredeemable, uh, where does the, the dividend go? Okay, Does it go through profit or loss or does it go through your retained earnings? Bits of that you have actually seen in financial accounting. Okay, Was it that your redeemable preference shares are? Uh, legally are a share but in substance they look like debts because there is an obligation to pay so the therefore even though legally you are paying a dividend it's treated as, as a finance cost in profit or loss okay yeah you sat there scratching your head already thinking did we actually do that you did in financial accounting uh, ifrs 7 is all about the disclosures so we've got the numbers on the face of the financial statements in the statements of financial position in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income but there's lots of complexity behind the numbers so we need to go through there and not just make disclosures with regards to disaggregating some of the numbers and giving a little bit more detail about what those financial instrument figures relate to but also we need a little bit of, of a narrative disclosure because attached to these financial instruments a lot of them are investments in debt, investments in shares. Uh, that can be inherently risky. So we need to go through there and look at the risk attached and, and disclose the risk that we are faced with to the users of the accounts. You're not going to see huge amounts of it at this level, but the key thing is to have an awareness that there is a standard on disclosure. And then finally, you've got the most up-to-date standard, the all-singing or dancing standard, if you like, which is there's IFRS 9. And what IFRS 9 effectively does is replaces the old financial instrument standard that was the IS 39. And IFRS 9 gives us the new rules to deal with financial assets and financial liabilities, how to measure them initially, how to measure them subsequently. How do we go through there and recognise gains and losses are on disposal? There's then even more complex aspects to it, such as looking at the impairment of a financial asset looking at hedging yeah we'll, we'll save that for another day okay so i must have said the word financial instrument several times already but we haven't actually introduced the concept of what a financial instrument is okay uh, because although the rules are, are detailed and quite complex if you bring it back to the basics that that can help it in some challenging circumstances so what we have there is in order for there to be a financial instrument, there has to be a financial asset in one set of books and a financial liability or equity within another set of books. 
And then between those two parties, there is that contract that delivers the financial asset in one set of books and the financial liability or equity within the other. OK, uh, this is where the, the, the definitions begin to go through and kick in. Uh, a financial asset is a contractual right to receive cash or an investment in another entity's shares. OK, so an investment in the equity of another company. OK, uh, we'll bring that down in a moment as, as to how that can then determine what is a financial asset within our accounts. But in order for there to be the financial instrument, you've then got the other side of what's happening within the counterparty. So the company B would have a financial liability or equity. Now, a financial liability is a contractual obligation to pay cash. Uh, and the equity is just your residual interest within the assets after deducting the liability. So looking effectively as a shareholder, what you own. OK, you own the assets, you own the liabilities. When you net them off, that gives you your equity. And that's what you ultimately own overall, isn't it? So the key distinguishing factor there between determining whether or not something is classified as a financial liability or as equity is that contractual right to deliver cash. If there is a contractual right to pay cash, then there is a financial liability. If not, then it would be seen as equity. OK, now in the world of financial instruments, there are all sorts of complex financial instruments that exist out there, particularly in the world of banking and finance. But if we bring it back just a little bit and go back to the basics, OK, go back to one of the first things that you looked at when you were in the days of financial accounting. You went through there, didn't you, and looked at credit sales and credit purchases. OK, a credit sale. And a credit purchase between two entities gives rise to a financial instrument. Why? Well, if you go back and look at the credit sale, then you have a receivable. Now, a receivable is a contractual right to receive cash, isn't it? OK, you are due that money from your customer. On the opposite side of that, yeah, your customer has bought those goods from you. So therefore, they have made a credit purchase and within their book, they will have a payable. So they have that contractual right to go through there and deliver cash okay, to make that payment. So even though we've got a really complex standard, some of the most simplistic, basic day to day transactions that a business enters into are covered by this suite of accounting standards, IS32, IFRS7 and IFRS 9. So when we look in SBR at the impairment of a financial asset, we're looking at the impairment of a receivable. Those rules that you see within the standard apply to our day to day bog standard receivable that we see on the statement of financial position. But we're not going to really look at those uh, within financial reporting. What we're going to begin to look at uh, as well by let's just say company B issues shares again you've done that in financial accounting uh, if you issue shares you debit the bank credit share capital at the nominal value and credit share premium with the excess don't we that dumping ground where we plonk in the excess above the par value again that's equity because you are given the people who you issue those shares to uh, their share of the net assets. Yeah, they own the assets, they own the liabilities, and we net them off. That net amount is the equity, and we've given them their share within that equity. However, if we look at it from the, the investor's perspective, the investor can be a company, can be an individual. We're going to look at it from a company's perspective. They have an investment in company B's shares. So that there is an asset, it's a resource controlled by the entity that gives rise to, to future economic benefits. Those economic benefits are probable. You can measure the cost reliably. So it, it meets the definitions of an asset and the recognition criteria per the framework. But more importantly, it is a financial asset and therefore its treatment will be governed by the suite of accounting standards covering financial instruments. Why? Because the definition of a financial asset is a contractual right to receive cash, which 
isn't relevant here because you're not contractually obliged to receive any cash whatsoever from company B. But you do have an investment in the equity of an other entity. So that investment that you have is a financial asset. So what we'll be going through and looking at there is how you initially measure that financial asset, how you subsequently measure it, and then how you de-recognize it. Likewise, investments aren't necessarily just in a business's equity. What could happen there is that a company can be looking to raise finance via issuing debt. So they have debited their bank and credited their debentures. Uh, or credited their loan stock. That loan stock, that debenture is a financial liability because there is a contractual right to deliver cash. Okay, you have that obligation. There is an obligation to pay cash. So therefore, it is a liability and it is also a financial liability. So its treatment will be governed by our financial instruments accounting standards. What then happens is that from company A's perspective, they are the investor in the debt. They have provided the finance to company B. So they will be going through there and crediting their bank and debiting their investment in debt. Again, that is a financial asset. Why? Because it is a contractual right to receive the cash. OK, you will get interest. And you will also get the premium paid back as well. So therefore, it is an investment and it is a financial asset investment. So the focus that we're going to see within financial reporting uh, is making sure that we look at the presentation, the recognition, the measurement, and then we'll briefly touch upon the disclosure. But when we're looking at that, we're focusing on the investment in shares and the investment in debt. How do we present it? How do we recognize it? How do we measure it? How do we disclose it? Likewise, if you have huge amounts of borrowings, then you have issued debt, you have a financial liability. And again, we need to look at how we present it, how we recognize it, how we measure it, and how we disclose it. Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Let the fun begin.